Hello to everyone. Welcome to this NPTEL course on Advanced Priestess Concrete Design. A brief introduction about myself. I am currently working as a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at IIT Hyderabad. And I joined IIT Hyderabad before 13 years in the year 2012. And before joining IIT Hyderabad, I also worked as a design engineer at Structural Group. They are based out from Baltimore. I worked there for about two and a half years. Before that, I completed my PhD from Missouri University of Science and Technology. My research interests include understanding the behavior of reinforced and priestess concrete behavior. And we also do a lot of work on precast systems, particularly making it lightweight suiting to the needs of affordable housing and I also do a lot of work on repair and rehabilitation of structures using advanced composite materials. So I have about 16 years of research and teaching experience at this point of time and 12 students have graduated under my guidance and our research group has published more than 100 research papers. I am also currently serving as associate editor in the American Society of Civil Engineering Bridge Engineering Journal and also on the editorial board of AAC Journal of Composites for Construction. Well, so coming to the objectives of this course, uh, as you know, this is a very, very important course, which is going to focus on the fundamental uh, behavioral aspects as well as design aspects of priestess concrete. And uh, the, the goal would be to understand the behavior of priestess concrete under axial, flexure, shear and torsion loads. We will also start uh, solving the problems related to the design aspects of precess concrete, particularly focusing on flexure, shear, torsion and their combinations. And then we will get into uh, more advanced topics like uh, design aspects of continuous beams and then we will also spend some time on connections and then how do we combine uh, precast as well as cast in situ, pre-tension element as well as post-tension elements, joining them together in the chapter on composite sections. So we will also spend a lot of time on understanding what is bond and anchorage zones and the design of post-tension slabs, which is again a very important uh, uh, topic. Now most of the buildings, they tend to go for post-tension slabs due to the various advantages that we will discuss it in this chapter. So a brief outline of the module uh, and the syllabus that what we are going to have. As you know, uh, this is a 12-week course. So, so each week will have about three hours of contents. The module one will start with the introduction and uh, we will talk about history of pre-stress concrete, what are the advantages and disadvantages of pre-stressing and various applications of pre-stress concrete. We will also talk about types of pre-stressing, what are the systems that are available and devices. And then we will move on to the material properties, particularly focusing on the short and uh, long-term behavior of concrete and what are the stress strain curve properties of pre-stressing steel. Then we will also spend some time on how the pre-stressing strand is produced. Uh, typically, there are two types of pre-stressing strand that we will talk about it and then how do we estimate and use the mechanical properties of pre-stressing steel. Then the next chapter is uh, losses in pre-stress and uh, it's a very important topic again uh, because the early attempts of pre-stressing were not successful because the engineers did not really account for the loss of pre-stress. So it's very important uh, to understand the fundamental aspects of uh, losses. We will spend some time on what is immediate loss what are time dependent loss? So immediate losses include elastic shortening, anchorage slip, and then also we have friction losses. So we will spend some time on that. Then we will move on to the time dependent losses that uh, we'll be focusing on relaxation of steel, and then shrinkage, and then creep. We will also talk about what are the various code provisions, how the code provisions actually account for losses in the module 2. In module 3, we will move on to the behavioral aspects. We will take a simple uh, member, uh, axial member and then we will try to see how the axial behavior is going to be there for a pre system 
or for a regular RC member, what are the differences between reinforced concrete and precessed concrete uh, in terms of low displacement behavior. We will also uh, spend some time how to analyze a transfer, analyze at service and also at ultimate loads for engine. Then we will move on to the module 4 which is a very important topic because pre-stressing typically is used for long span elements. Okay, so deflection will start governing the design the moment you go for longer span and tree stressing helps you to limit the deflection. So it's a very important topic and we will spend a couple of weeks on this. Uh, first we'll start with what are the different concepts of analysis. We will talk about stress concept, force concept and very elegant method called load balancing method uh, which was proposed by T.Y. Lane, he is one of the very famous bridge engineer. But then we will sp spend some time on cross-section analysis for flexure, how to derive moment curvature for a pre-stressed section and we will also using simplified methods and then also we will see how to use layer by layer approach for getting the moment curvature uh, behavior for different sections. Then we will also see what are the effect of various parameters on the moment curvature behavior. Then we will move on to design aspects here we will start defining what is the current point, what is the pressure line and then how do you uh, using uh, the amount of pre-stressing and the profile of pre-stressing, how do we control the crack widths, how do we calculate deflections and camber and then we also spend some time on stress analysis of flexural members. Then the fourth part we will move on to flexural design of statically determinate beams. We, we classify uh, the design of pre-stress members as type 1, type 2 or type 3. So we will spend some time on what is type 1, what is type 2, how do we design these sections and there is also an elegant method called Magnell's graphical method that again we will spend some time on how to use this method and then finally we will also spend some time on detailing requirements. With that we will move to the module 5 which is again uh, shear and torsion, analysis and design for shear and torsion. So we will spend some time on how, what is shear, why shear design is important, what are the failure modes in shear, what are the shear resisting mechanism of uh, uh, pre-stress concrete member, how is it different from reinforced concrete, all those things that we will talk in the module 5.1 and then we will move on to analysis and design for torsion and uh, what are the different types of torsion is there, what are the various theories that are have been developed for understanding the behavior of uh, pre-stress members for torsion, uh, skew bending theory, uh, cracking torque using plasticity theory and then thin wall tube analogy. And we will also uh, finally spend some time how the code uh, provisions evolved over a period of time uh, and then what kind of simplifications have been uh, incorporated in the code provisions. So we will spend some time on that and then with that we will complete the module 5. Then we will move to module 6 which is for design for bond and anchorage zone. Again uh, anchorage zone design is a very important in post tension systems. We are going to lock in a huge amount of compression force in the anchorage zone. So we have to design them carefully otherwise you, you may accidentally damage the end zones. So how to design those things also we will talk about it in the part 1 of module 6. In part 2, we are going to spend what is transfer of pre-stress in pre-tension members, what is transfer length, why is it important, all those things that we will talk about. In part 3 of module 6, we are going to spend time on design of pre-stress for bond and bearing. Okay. In module 7, we are going to spend some time on analysis and design of continuous beams. Uh, particularly we will see uh, what is statically indeterminate system, uh, particularly continuous beams and what are the advantages of going for continuous members and what are the disadvantages of continuity in pre-stressing and for continuous system how to determine the good cable profile and then we will also uh, take a example and then design a continuous beam and then how to come up with a profile and the amount of pre-stressing. We will also spend some time on linear transformation 
and concordancy of cable propeller. It's a very important concept uh, that you should be aware to uh, reduce the uh, secondary moment or eliminate the secondary moments in continuous beams. We will talk about that. Module 8 will focus on composite construction. Again, composite construction can be made with precast uh, as well as cast in situ elements. We can combine them using pre stressing. What are the different types of composite construction is available? We will we'll talk about that. And then how to analyze for stresses and then how to estimate the flexure and shear strength of composite section also. We will spend some time on this part 2 of module 8. Then uh, we will take an example and then see how to analyze and design a composite section in the third part of the module 8. Then we will move on to module 9 which are, which are basically connections. Again, how do we design the connections in a composite member? We also have special uh, elements which are dapped end beam connections, how to do that. And then we, we also have disturbed regions, typically precast priestess elements are supported on certain elements which will be undergoing, uh, they, they will not really follow the Bernoulli's bending theory, they are called as disturbed regions and they because of the heavy point load that will be coming. So that are typically analyzed using Stratton type models. So we will spend some time on what is how to design these kind of regions. And then we will also take an example problem, how to connect this precast priestess members, what kind of uh, precautions that you should take in design that we will spend some time. With that, we will move on to uh, another important uh, topic which is post tension slabs. So, it does not matter what kind of slab, the structural system that you go for, uh, either it is reinforced concrete or steel or uh, uh, timber. Uh, typically, nowadays, there is a tendency to use post tension slab for uh, most of the buildings, right, because of the various advantages. So, we will talk about what is a post tension slab, how it is actually. Uh, designed and executed in the site and then we will talk about analysis and design considerations and what are the factors that are going to influence the thickness of the slab and again corrosion protection, what kind of precautions you need to take for corrosion protections and using load balancing concept, how do you quickly come up with the amount of pre-stressing and the profile, all those things that we will talk about it in the module 1. Then we will move on to equal and frame method which is a very again a uh, very widely used uh, approach for designing a, a post tension slab system. The slabs are idealized as a frame and then you, you design the equivalent frame. Then we will get into how to estimate at ultimate uh, the flexural capacity of the slabs and then how to do the shear design of slabs. Post tension slabs are prone to a two way shear or punching shear failures. So that again how to design for punching shear, we will spend some time and then we will also see how to calculate the deflections of the slabs and then one example we will go through on step by step how to design a post tension flat field. And then the last part of the module, we want to focus a little bit on modeling aspects of post tension slab because uh, design engineers now they are commonly using some commercial software packages. So what kind of methods? Uh, that we are simplifications you can use in your modeling. So, we will spend some time on that. Finally, we want to end the, uh, uh, the course by highlighting various applications of pre stressing in infrastructure. So, we are planning to invite some industry experts and then they will be talking about what are the applications of post tensioning in bridges and applications of post tensioning in buildings. And then uh, PT is also used extensively for structural strengthening. So, we will spend some time on how to use post tensioning concept for structural strength. So, and you all know that exam is optional for those who have registered. You need to pay a fee of 1000 rupees and the time of date and time of exams uh, tentatively fixed in the month of October. I think you will get notification and you will have two sessions. I think you can choose one of the session and then you can write the exam. And the criteria to get the certificate, as you all know that each week we will give an assignment and you are supposed to score well in that and average of about 8, best 8 assignments out of 12 will be taken for evaluation and the weightage for that assignments is about 25 percentage and 
in the final exam, uh, we will be uh, for 100 marks and 75 percentage of the weightage will be taken from the uh, exam score. The final score will be average assignment score plus exam score. So you can see that you will be eligible for a certificate only if your average assignment score is more than 10 out of 25 and the exam score should be at least 30 out of 75. So and then also uh, even if your score is more than 40, the combined score, if you don't meet these two criteria, that is average assignment score should be more than 10 out of 25 and the exam score should be more than 30 out of 75, then only you will get the certificate. Well, these are the textbooks. Again, we will we will talk about that in the introduction part. Uh, the Krishnaraj is again a very good book on priestess concrete event, especially for, uh, for Indians, uh, for students in India. I think this is a very good reference. And we also have book by Professor N. Rajakopalan, uh, which is also is quite a useful uh, book that you can use for uh, reading. And a uh, lot of my material would also come from uh, Professor Collins and Mitchell's uh, very classic book on priestess concrete structures. And uh, uh, and we all, we have also for this course we have taken a lot of material from Edward Navi, uh, which we we duly acknowledge. And we also have some conceptual uh, examples have been taken from Nielsen and they have been slightly modified to showcase various uh, topics that we have discussed in the previous slides. Well, these are the codes because it's a design course, you have to follow the, uh, the provisions that are in the code. So currently uh, the code that it is in VOG is IS 1343 2012. And uh, you all know that IS-456 uh, draft version has been recently circulated, uh, but it does not come into uh, effect yet. And that IS-456 now is going to combine both the reinforced concrete and precious concrete. But uh, when I went through it, the most of the, the provisions that are there are the fundamental uh, principles are one and the same. There may be some minor changes in the equations and so on that I think we will We'll talk about it when we get into the design aspects. And for the loads, we will again, you all know that we will be using IS 875. It has five parts. And then for taking the design loads, we will be actually using IS 875. And these are some of the special publications we will be using uh, for understanding the uh, detailing aspects as well as about the uh, concrete material aspects. Well, again, uh, we have said uh, pre-stressing is used both in buildings and bridges. And bridges, again, you have road bridges and railway bridges. For road bridges, we use typically IRC 112. And uh, for railway bridges, we use IRS concrete bridge rules. And uh, this was again reaffirmed in 2014. But the fundamental principles of uh, all these things are the same. Only depending upon the applications, your loading requirements will differ, right? So we will we'll talk about that in the coming slide. So with that, thank you uh, everyone. So looking forward to a very fruitful uh, and engaging course on advanced business concrete. Thank you.